Hello, everybody. My name is Tiffany Hughes. I am the current lead social worker for the Roosevelt School District, and I'm here to talk to you uh, today about how connection is uh, really the key to student success. First, I'm going to start this out by having everybody just close their eyes and get comfortable wherever they're at. And uh, think back to when you were in school. And think back to who was your favorite teacher growing up and why? It could be more than one. It could be uh, maybe another professional within the school, a principal, a vice principal, a social worker. And I want you to think about how that person made you feel and how they impacted your education, looking back on it. Now that I've given you guys an opportunity to think about that question, I want to draw your guys' attention to this word cloud here. This is a word cloud that a recent training group that I had came up with when I asked them the exact same question. And what I find when I normally ask this question is that these are the answers that I get, that that teacher made me feel seen and heard, inspired to learn, excited to learn, that they were kind to me, that they made me feel brave because they made me feel like I could learn things I didn't think I could learn before. And I feel like all of these words all speak to the connections that we build with our students. And it got me thinking when I first did this activity with a group of teachers that maybe my ability as a social worker or what I can do as a social worker to help my school could be to teach the teachers how to build connections with students and how to build community within our school to make us more successful. As I previously mentioned, I'm a school social worker. And so when I asked this question um, to a group of teachers when I first started, um, it was in that role. And so I wanted to just talk to you briefly about that role. School social workers are in schools to help students um, overcome any social or emotional barriers um, that may be interfering with their academic success. That seems super simplified and it is um, because that can include so many different things, right? That can include providing food, helping um, parents get access to housing information. It could include us also providing mental health services, crisis services, or referring those out. But our ultimate goal is to promote and support the educational process for the student. When I first started that position as a school social worker, one of the first things I did was go around to the teachers and the administrators and I asked, how can I support you and the students on campus in achieving their educational goals? What's getting in the way? And almost every single person said the exact same thing. And it was that our students are bringing so much more than just their backpack into the classroom. And that oftentimes, because of all of that stuff that's getting in the way, socially and emotionally, that students are not coming to class ready to learn. And they need help getting them in a mind frame where they can learn into their learning brain and their server, their th thriving brain and out of their surviving brain. And that's where the connection comes in. Connection and a positive one to an adult and a positive connection that's being modeled for them so that they can mirror that with other children in their class can help children go from a survival brain where they're not sure what's gonna happen next uh, into a thriving brain where they're ready to learn and take chances and remember the material because they're not thinking about their safety as being in question. 
they're now being able to focus on what the teacher's saying. So then I had to figure out how to make that happen, right? How can I make students feel like there was connections and safety in school? And so I started looking at research. And um, I found a lot of research from Dr. James Comer. One of the most important things that stuck out to me was a, was a quote that he had and said, no significant learning occurs without a significant relationship. And I was like, oh my gosh, I found exactly what I was looking for to help the teachers. So I started reading some of his research about things that he did that could help. And how can I help build the capacity on my campus and teach the teachers how to have those positive interactions to build rapport with students. Because me as a social worker, that was a skill that I already had. But with teachers, they already had so much other things to worry about, right? Oftentimes they're thinking about standardized tests, um, curriculum, all of those things. And because of that, I think that oftentimes um, they were worried that they wouldn't have time in their day to be able to set aside some time to build those significant relationships one-on-one. -on -one. So I wanted to find them some tools. And the tools that I found were simple. On your screen right now, you're gonna see three pictures. Two of the pictures are something that we called community circles that we began having every morning in each of the classes here on my campus and throughout the district where teachers set aside 30 minutes to give each and every student time to feel seen and feel heard. And this was built in so they didn't have to worry about it getting in the way of anything else. And what we also had them do was instead of having their own classroom rules that the teacher created, they instead engaged their students in a conversation. And we called that about the rules and we called that a classroom agreement. And instead of the students um, just having to follow the rules that the teacher came up with, they all came up with them together and then they signed the document. And this helped them to feel like they had a say in what was happening in the classroom on a daily basis. The time in the morning gave each of those students time to feel seen and feel heard. And because of this, what we noticed was these positive relationships built the motivations of our students. They created safer spaces. They also um, allowed the students uh, to learn how to interact with each other because we as teachers and staff members were modeling how to do those interactions in these circles and through those agreements um, and it improved their behavior because they felt like they got to say and not only the classroom agreements, but what would happen if those agreements were broken? And we started noticing around our school that overall the classes that were doing these classroom circles or these community circles and these classroom agreements, we started to see an increase in student participation and an in, uh, a decrease in um, behaviors that we would say that were negative behaviors in class. And then teachers remarked that they also felt like they had more time during the day after that because they allowed the students some time to process in the morning some of that stuff they were bringing. And if students were identified that needed help first thing in the morning because something really bad happened, we were able to identify those students quickly. So what I'll say going forward, it's a quote I found while I was doing some of the research. And I really do believe it to be true, that the key to school improvement would be found not in programs, not in structure, not in timetables, but in the quality of our relationships that we're building with these students. Mm -hmm.